10. Discovery's four computers now have primary control of critical vehicle function. 9. 8. 7. Discovery, go at throttle up. So good morning everybody and, uh, and welcome to Boston Lodge on a slightly um, dubious morning weather-wise but uh, having waited 80 years for this I don't think we're going to let, let a, few, uh, a few storms uh, hold, us, hold us back. So I'm very pleased to, uh, to uh, introduce you to uh, Welsh Pony in the uh, running in livery and uh, I want to start by saying a huge thank you to everybody who has made this possible. And as ever, you start to write the list of people that have contributed, and it just goes on and on. So, as normal with uh, Festiniog things, it's the whole Festiniog family that's contributed to this to this event and made it possible for the engine to be uh, to be here today. So, thank you very much indeed for everyone who's helped, be that financially, uh, be that with engineering work, volunteers, staff, everyone who's uh, helped make this make this possible. So, um, as all good um, engine men know, that uh, all the time that the engine is sat there without a fire in it, you're wasting time. Uh, and so, once we've got a fire in it, then we can talk about the engine a little bit more. Um, as we go to light up this engine, um, I have to doff my cap to Norman Bond and the Carriage Works team, who very wisely spotted when we took old Welsh pony apart, that there was rather a lot of timber cladding. Uh, this timber cladding is the old boiler lagging uh, that came off the engine. There's been some photographs of it on uh, the web in the, last, uh, in the last few days. Now this lagging is quite interesting in that most of it had rotted away um, whilst the engine was at Harbour Station on a plinth where the seawater had got in, trickled round to the boiler and the wood had rotted. However, on the driver's side of the locomotive, next to the hydrostatic lubricator, it all survived. Why? 
because leaking oil from the hydrostatic lubricator had trickled its way down under the lagging and preserved the timber. And so this timber is the original lagging from Welsh Pony. As you can imagine, we considered should we reinstate this piece of uh, timber as lagging uh, and we concluded that that wasn't really going to work very well. So, this has been in store in the corner of the carriage works for uh, seven or eight years now and uh, we're about to use this to light up the fire in Welsh Pony for the first time today. Okay. We're just breaking this um, timber up and we realise there's not exactly a lot of calorific value in, uh, in this uh, particular pieces of, uh, pieces of timber. So, um, as you might imagine, we uh, are rather limited to the number of people who can join us uh, here today for this uh, um, presentation. And uh, so we had to think which celebrity that we could ask to uh, come and light the match uh, for the first time. And so I'm uh, pleased to uh, introduce Millie Lewin, who's Hello. going to do the uh, do the honours for us. But uh, before that, she has a little story to tell you of her own about uh, about Welsh yeah. pony. Thank you. Um, so about ten years ago, um, I was much younger then, about, I was about five years old, and um, me and Dad uh, we found Welsh pony in the old engine shed, and uh, it was all lonely by itself and. Um, so we thought, well, well, I was thinking, well, it's such a shame to see such a lovely engine, so lonely and by itself. And whereas most people would love an engine for its class or perhaps its colour, I loved Welsh Pony. <coughs> I loved Welsh Pony uh, because of its name. I thought it was wonderful. So that was when I asked Dad, can we get this little pony cantering once more? And to my amazement, here we are today. Okay. Um, so Okay, thank you. Right, so uh, we have the matches. Yep. <laughs> Grateful thanks to Claire Britton, who found a packet of England's glory matches for us at the last minute last night. Thanks, Claire. So we're going to try and uh, light this fire. I suspect maybe we're going to have to go inside the shed to uh, light the fire on the shovel and, uh, and then bring the, the fire out here. So, OK. We'll, we'll try. Yeah. You might work if you stand in the doorway. Yeah. Block okay. the doorway. Yeah. So if you stand in there. Yeah. Right. So if you just stand with your body in the doorway like that. What am I going for? <laughs> see, see, that, see that edge there where it's a bit fluffy on there? Yeah. No, nope, let's try again. <laughs> there you go. Nope. <laughs> We've got it. We've got it lit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have ignition. Yeah, we, we have smoke at our chimney. So, um, probably time just to say just a few words about the Welsh pony story. And uh, I'd like to just touch on the, uh, the process that we went through in order to restore the engine. Um, <clears throat> of course, you will all remember it being outside of the, uh, the station at Port Maddock on a plinth. And, uh, and many of us have clambered over the engine over the years. There's lots of pictures of youngsters looking at the engine and being... Uh, captivated uh, by it when it was in its, its red livery there. And you know, um, <clears throat> that period when it was stood on the plinth, it did uh, great things for us in terms of uh, people connecting with the railway, but it did very little for the engine. When we actually took the engine apart, we found that seawater had got into a lot of places inside the cladding, under the tank and so on. And so the wear and the corrosion that was already there was really accelerated by the engine being left out next to the sea. Um, the engine was taken away from uh, that plinth uh, in the 90s to make space for um, some more car parking space in the coach bay and whatever, and ultimately to uh, make way for the Welsh Island uh, tracks going through. In that period, um, the engine was often found hanging around in various yards. So it had appeared at Minford Yard, <coughs> it had been at Boston Lodge, um, and one time I recall finding it under, well, almost under a tarpaulin at, uh, at Glanaporth Depot. And, uh, you know, it could never quite find a home. It'd go, be put in a shed and then somebody would move it out and put it somewhere else because they got something seemingly more important to uh, put inside. And so the engine deteriorated. I know that a team of guys helped and uh, tried to do cosmetic uh, restoration. Andy Lance, I know, was in, involved in, in that. Um, and that helped uh, a bit. But again, the engine kept appearing outside and, and, uh, and basically rotting away. And so the idea was that the engine would be a museum piece and, and that it would be retained in its um, current state. But when we got talking to our members and supporters, it became apparent that the view of the engine should stay as a museum piece was certainly not one that was shared by all. And indeed, the vast majority of people thought that they would much prefer to see Welsh Pony steaming again. And so with that, we prepared a conservation management plan. We looked at how we might best look after the loco and the original fabric. And uh, we worked our way towards getting the agreement of the heritage company, uh, the society and the boards to restore the engine. And uh, as is now well recorded, that restoration started in 2013 and, uh, and we dismantled the engine. And, and that's when actually we found just how bad the locomotive was. Uh, we took it apart and, and much of the engine, I remember sh shoveling up with a brush and dustpan and taking it to the skip. So uh, a lot of it had just become uh, rust. Now, at this point, I think it's really important to say um, that the restoration of this locomotive is dedicated to our first general manager of the Preserved Railway, as uh, Alan Garraway. Now, Alan had been here for many years, and as you all know, he, he left in the early 80s and went to Strath Bay, uh, where he had a, a happy retirement. Um, but in the last few years before Alan passed away, he can, started to take more of an interest in the railway again, and he visited us, and, and we spoke to him more often. And he said that one of the things that had saddened him about his time at the railway was that Welsh Pony could not be restored to traffic. It was always the next one that he wanted to do, and it never quite got there because there was always another engine leapfrogging the queue. So, uh, when he heard that we were thinking about restoring the locomotive, he made the first donation to start the Welsh Pony Restoration Fund. And I remember a cheque arriving in my office in an envelope from Alan, a cheque for £100, uh, which we still have and is in the archive today, and that started the restoration, the restoration process. Um, <clears throat> and it's been a long haul. It's cost something like a quarter of a million pounds in order to restore the engine. And uh, later on, at 
the lunchtime session when we hear Welsh Pony whistle for the first time. I'll ask John Wally to say a few words about which parts of the engine have been changed, which parts are original and, and so on. So it may seem like an unusual time to be lighting the fire for the first time, but you know, when we locked down because of the COVID crisis, we knew that Welsh Pony was only weeks away uh, from being able to steam. And indeed we'd hoped that it would be in action and would be named during the, the Fairley 150 Gala, uh, which we planned for last weekend. Unfortunately, as you know, all our services had to be cancelled. Uh, that gala has been cancelled. And so um, the intention now um, is that by sharing this on the internet, we're hoping to keep you connected to your railway by sharing with you this moment. Um, the guys at Boston Lodge have been able to come back in a limited number of people working in carefully controlled circumstances, and we've been able to, to finish uh, the locomotive. And I very much hope um, that you'll be able to enjoy it in the autumn should the lockdown be lifted. This is something we don't know, but we hope that we will be able to. And what we've said is, you'll notice that the engine isn't carrying the nameplates at the moment. Um, and uh, as a symbol of sort of respect, really, for our supporters, the engine will not carry its nameplates until lockdown is over and we can invite all our members to come along or have the opportunity to see the engine being named. So we'll hold that last bit back until hopefully sometime, sometime in the autumn. Um, so with that, I'll leave you for now. And uh, I think there's a video to follow which shows you some uh, bits of the Welsh, the Welsh pony story. And uh, I'll leave you with the happy thought that Welsh Pony has a fire in her belly again after 80 years. One last thing before I sign off. We need your help to get through the COVID crisis. We need your help with Welsh Pony. If you can buy one of our mugs, one of our prints, or if you can simply give us a pony for Welsh Pony, go to the Festiniog and Welsh Island Railways website, festrail.co.uk. Please click on the link. If you can just give us 25 quid, 100 quid, whatever. If you can give us a donation to help the railway and help Welsh Pony in these difficult times, we would really appreciate it. And thank you so much to everyone who's helped so far. Since then, it's been in storage, it's been uh, on display in various places, but it's not, uh, 
It's not been restored since then. Uh, and it's considered as unfinished business for the Festin Young Railway. Here's the original frames and uh, cylinders behind me. All the other components have been removed um, and we've been having a good look at these frames and cylinders and basically concluded that uh, we need to replace them. Um, the cylinders have a lot of uh, corrosion damage down here and some cracking in some of the corners so uh, we've decided to 
replace the cylinders. Uh, the restoration of this bit is now pretty much complete. Um, we had to renew various lower parts. The, the plate work down the sides, inside and out, has been renewed because that was rotted away. But most of the top of the tank uh, is original. Um, tidied up. Um, the, uh, the new pieces have been riveted in the bottom, uh, similar to the original construction. Um, and we were able to save things like the, uh, this pipe here, which runs right the way through the tank. That's a brass pipe, which uh, carries the blower pipe for the loco within it. Um, and actually that brass pipe was not too bad. It had new ends put on it and uh, it's gone back in again. Uh, a lot of the components we've removed from Welsh Pony in the stripping process um, and we've got most of the mechanical components here from the engine, the, uh, the side rods, coupling and connecting rods, uh, some axle boxes, cylinder front cover, uh, sorry, steam chest cover, cylinder cover, um, we've got some of the, the horn blocks that the axle boxes uh, working there's uh, pistons and rods um, some of the uh, brackets that support the tanks off the frames the motion brackets there which uh, carry the slide bars springs uh, cross heads the rear cylinder covers there and then further back we've got some, uh, some brake gear we see the sand pots that sit in front of the tanks Right, this here's uh, Welsh Pony's boiler. As you can see, we've now separated it away from the frames and all the other bits and pieces. Um, we've done uh, some assessment work on it to see if it was possibly reusable, but uh, we've concluded that really it's not, uh, it's not possible to, um, to reuse any of it. Uh, we've found uh, some thinning and wastage at the bottom of the barrel. Uh, down here where the seams join and down here as well at the front tube plate um, so we've uh, basically concluded that the best course of action is going to be to build a completely new boiler um, but with all the external dimensions absolutely matching what we've got here so that uh, we can put the locomotive back together and you wouldn't be able to tell that it's got a new boiler unless you start looking very carefully. Uh, we've now got some nice new frame plates and new cylinder castings and these are now as you can see they're, they're upside down on our surface table in the works um, and quite a lot has been done. The, uh, the cylinder block's been machined and fitted to the to the new frames so that's got a nice Nice new cylinder block there. We've got some uh, some original parts incorporated. This is the motion bracket. Um, these are original pieces. So uh, Bob's um, welding on the first of the pads onto the boiler of uh, Welsh Pony, which will uh, which attach the boiler to the frames. Uh, it's a relatively unconventional loco in that. Um, the firebox effectively forms part of the frame structure so uh, the bracket is welding on now will have a an extension coming forward this way as well and that will be bolted to the back of the frames then run forward to the cylinders you see the uh, tenders also approaching completion it's uh, now on its wheels and the uh, Springs and axle boxes are all done. Um, and also we started building the, uh, the sort of bunker area within the tender.
out of the way. It's all right, like that. Like this. Well, it it will fall over though if someone walks around and knocks it. It will fall over. So okay. one person. Slip it in. That bed there, it has received the massive clump just there. Yeah, because we haven't pulled the flat legs. As well, there's just been a weekend working party on the loco, and uh, they've fitted some more of the um, boiler cladding, um, and they've made done some foot plating work around the back. Uh, the other thing that's uh, happened is that uh, smoke box has been put together. Um, it's a stainless steel smoke box, which is what we do as a standard for certainly the smaller locos now because although the material costs a little bit more we've found that uh, it lasts much much better than ordinary mild steel construction so the smoke box shell is there um, we've got uh, the brake gear is uh, is fitted you can see here um, so there's a stretcher and carrying the brake blocks it's just um, a pair on the loco. Um, the obviously being rod coupled. If you apply braking to this one wheel, it's effectively braking through the leading wheel set as well. Okay, we've got the original re re reverser here, which has been uh, rebuilt. It's uh, had those bits of wastage dealt with, and the uh, the different notches. Um, uh, welded up and filed and made good again um, and that's been been trial fitted and that uh, connects by this long reversing rod so the reversal sit about there in the cab the reversing rod comes along here and operates the valve gear through this crank arm here so that's ready for final assembly here's the uh, new Coupling and connecting rods for Welsh Pony. There's the uh, coupling rod, sorry, connecting rod, <laughs> coupling rod. See, they've all been uh, nicely polished up and finished off, ready to go. Sort of 